Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tom, I'm a makeup artist from London. Recently, I saw a gorgeous makeup look that features this sort of mustard eyeshadow on Lily Collins. It was done by Fiona Styles, and I just thought I wanted to do my own version of it. I've donned my mustard shirt, um, and I thought I would just create this look for you. It's really catered to downturned and hooded eyes, but also um, to adding sort of glam elements of makeup into a more natural routine. I think a lot of the time with um, YouTube and Instagram, uh, tutorials you might not really be able to um, wear it outside because the makeup would look really really heavy but I'm confident that if you did this sort of look you'd be really really happy to go outside right into the bright sunlight and people wouldn't think you look sort of crazy. If you'd like to see um, how I do this tutorial please keep on watching. Um, I'm gonna pop a little bit of a paint pot from MAC over the eye. Um, when you're trying to sort of add like these glam elements to makeup um, you can still do all the steps that you might see um, on YouTube that lots of sort of like beauty bloggers and vloggers use but you just have to be more careful and be a little bit more sort of uh, gentle with your application so I'm putting on the tiniest tiniest bit of this um, paint pot um, and I'm literally taking that all over the eyelid if you're gentle you can blend it out to almost nothing but as you can see it gives you a really really nice um, clear canvas for any work you're going to do so now that that's on there I'm going to go in and sort of create the structure of my eyes. When you do have the hooded and downturned eyes, sometimes it's useful to really sort of see your shapes first. I'm going to be chopping and changing between products, but I'm going to use Cork from MAC, which is this shade here. It's just like a cool brown that's going to help me sort of define um, my socket. I'm using a really small um, fine brush. I need to pack this exactly where I want it. So I'm going to look straight ahead into the mirror and just take it above my socket in the outside crease. This is to kind of wing out the shape of my eye and just connect to the outside of your eye. But just remember, don't go too far down because you're going to end up with, you know, enhancing that sort of droopier shape of the eye. We really, really don't want that. For a downturned eye shape, you want to keep things going up. <laughs> Bring this slowly in, just over the hood of the eye so you can see the shadow peeking out even when your eyes are open. I'm just going to extend that slightly out to make it look more like a wing. But that's drawing the shape of my eye outwards and upwards. I'm going to go in again with a sort of finer um, blending brush and just gently whisper over the edges so that the shadow blends into nothing. You really, really don't want a harsh line, but because we don't have the space to play with and we need to be more precise about the, the shape of the eye, you've got to be careful where you're blending. You can't just get a big brush and just blend absolutely everywhere. It just sadly doesn't work for our eye shape. And see, that looks like a really seamless blended edge now. So if I lift up my brows like this, you can see that structure on the eye where I've really, really sort of carved out um, the eyelid shape. When I look at you straight ahead, you can definitely still see the eyeshadow peeking above my um, above my crease and I've winged it up and out on both sides. And again, we're drawing that shape up. Now I could absolutely fluff stuff up with this next product, but I saw this image of Lily Collins. She'd had her makeup done by Fiona Styles, and she had this gorgeous mustardy shade on her eye. Now the closest thing I can find in my entire collection, Lord knows I search for this colour all the time, is this one by Anastasia Beverly Hills. It's being gentle and patting in shadows is really, really good when you want to build up colour, density and payoff without things looking sort of chunky and overly, overly powdery. I'm going to go right back and make sure I'm getting into the fold of my eye here because of, you know, the hood and the creases. Sometimes I get, you can actually still see a fine little white line I have to stretch the skin out to uh, to fill in all the shadow so that it looks good from every angle. Okay, and then you just have to go back in along the edges to blend that shadow in with your original eyeshadow, which was, remember, cork from MAC. You just want to make sure that those two shades are really well melded together. Now, my least favourite step of all is liner. I'm going to use a brown liner, but I'm just going to wiggle it into the roots of the lashes. I'm not going to take up my lid space because, again, 
if you sort of see me from straight on, I don't have a lot of lid space. So I don't want to cover up this gorgeous colour. You might actually struggle to see what I've done there, but if I sort of lift my hood, you can see there's more definition at the root of the lash. In an ideal world, I would be able to do a nice liner that sort of runs across um, the lid and smoke it out, which would be really, really pretty. But I just don't have the space, so this will do the next best thing. And I'm going to go straight in with mascara. I've curled my lashes. This is the Huda Beauty uh, Legit Lashes. And I'm just using the, what is it, the defining side. Curl and length. I'm also just going to go in with some of these clusters. They're sort of little trios from Kiss Lash. Um, only because, as you can see, I don't really have much in the way of lashes and I just like to fill them out a little bit more so I look a bit more lashy. Um, it's a way of getting that sort of more glam look without going over the top. It's not going to look too, too crazy. Drop them in over your natural lash and make sure that they sit in place. I'm just using shorts because again, my lashes are so short that I can't really get away with any more. Those little trios have just added the tiniest bit more volume to my lashes. It sort of makes them look a little bit more thick without me having to pile on the mascara. So to keep this look glamorous, but more sort of day-to-day -day wearable, I'm actually gonna go in with the concealer first. So I don't have to put a thick layer of foundation over my face. I'm just gonna go underneath the eye in the inner corner here. You've probably seen this trick a lot on um, Instagram and YouTube at the moment, but to really sort of brighten the inner corner and brighten up under the eye here, sort of help to draw the face up. Add a little bit in the inner corner here. This is um, an Estee Lauder concealer, stay in place. Um, I just find it wears really, really well, but it's still very brightening. It's very thick. <laughs> I'll pop a little bit on my chin, but just in these areas to help sort of snatch the face up. I'm going to dab them in and to blend them out because I want to maintain the coverage here. And as you can see, this helps to draw the shape of the eye up. It's keeping this inner corner really bright. Apologize if you can hear this, um, <laughs> the bin truck, which is taking away all the bins. It's come at the very inopportune moment. You can see I'm really brightening up these areas. The coverage of this concealer is amazing and it really, really stays. around the nose. I oh, tend to get a bit red. As you can see, my whole face is really red at the moment just because I am very, um, very reactive and sensitive. Uh, with the winter, things aren't, things aren't going so well for my skin. <laughs> and basically, I'm just picking up on all the areas that I want to have more coverage in advance so that I don't um, overdo it with thicker foundation. And now I'm just going to go in with a sort of heavier foundation. It's a Laura Mercier one. It's a flawless fusion ultra long wear. And I'm mixing it with a little bit of oil. I'm just doing that on my palette here so that it provides a little bit more of a lighter wear. And I'm just going to use it on my fingers to dab around my face and start to blend out on the skin. Um, again, just to try and shear out that coverage so that I don't go over the top. For a sort of more natural glam, you can still use these full coverage products, but just shear them out a little bit. Piling on all heavy products is never a really good idea because you'll never be able to sort of get back to the natural finish uh, if you do that. So for me, this uh, Laura Mercier foundation, I can't wear on its own. Um, I've got really, really dry skin and I find it catches to, um, you know, any flaky bits or any drier areas. See, like even in my hairline, I'm a bright red. <laughs> you could use sort of a lighter formula anyway, like a BB cream or whatever it is that you use day to day. Um, but I'm just trying to show you the versatility of using a more full coverage product, um, not in a full coverage way. Another sort of super glammy step that you can tone down a little bit for day to day wear is using a sort of cream contour or bronze. But I'm just going to warm it up on my fingers and dab the slightest amount on my cheekbones. I'm kind of going up on the top of my cheekbones um, because it is a bronzer shade. Um, if I go underneath, it's going to make me look sort of um, quite muddy because of the warmth of it. When that sort of orangey shade combines with the um, the natural shadow underneath my cheekbone. So keep it up high. And if you're using your fingers like me, you're going to keep it really, really sheer. That's kind of what we want. We don't want lots of really obvious visible layers of makeup, but we do want to create that sort of 
sun-kissed bronzed look by keeping it in these areas and then blending out gently and carefully you'll almost not really be able to tell that you've got makeup on gently start blending that and again there's still got that sort of nice slip from my foundation because of the uh lovely oil that i popped in it when you're blending make sure you blend upwards and into the face so you can see it blends away into nothing still lovely lovely warmth not taking away from the sort of dewy gloss of the skin now i know i'm already sort of gleaming from using oil in the foundation and also having a thick heavy moisturizer underneath but i'm gonna go in and use a little bit of the beauty light wand by charlotte tilbury just on the tops of my cheekbones it's gonna again really keep that beautiful beautiful shine but not be overwhelming because it is still a cream product you can barely see any texture on the skin but you still get to keep that gorgeous gorgeous glow so when i move from side to side the sheen is just so pretty you know one of the things i really do like about glam makeup is the sort of glow that you can achieve but often in the way that people do it normally with the sort of powders you do tend to see a very sharp sort of line of demarcation and because it's in this sort of side part of the face where you can smile if you have any lines when there's powder there it gets to get a little bit cakey you do tend to see it i'm gonna pop a little bit on the top of my lip here and a little bit above above the brow bone here if you're someone who really really cannot live without contour then i recommend that you get one that's sort of quite quite pale, not not much darker than your skin tone. So I have this one here from Rodial. I would recommend you probably try and do a cream for this, but just in case you want to see how to use a powder more naturally, just dab in a little bit onto the brush, tap it off, and also tap the excess into your hand. I always do this with my powder products when I'm applying it to sort of wet skin, so that there's virtually nothing on the brush. And then you're just gonna gently kiss it into the hollows of your face. Now I, I'm very gaunt. <laughs> I have quite a thin, long face, so contouring isn't really the best thing for me. But if you're going to do it, just pop it straight into this part underneath the cheekbone. And as you can see, it's creating that lovely little bit of shadow. But because the colour is not too dark, it's not loads of shades darker than my skin, it's not going to look overpowering. Um, contour shades are naturally quite cool, certainly for my skin tone. Um, but if I was to go in with a cool much deeper shade i would look very very ashy and gray and it would look quite silly so this is just mimicking the natural shadow of my face and making me look very very hungry <laughs> just to take away some of the excess shine i'm going to be going in with the nars translucent powder in crystal um, i'm going to be using a very very small brush again the smallest amount you can put on the better and what i've done is i've packed a load into the brush and then i'm just going to pat it into my hand like this so there's almost nothing left and I'm just dabbing it where I need it, sort of on the inner corner of the eyes and under to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. A little bit around the sides of the nose. You can see a bit down here. But you can see I'm still maintaining a lot of the glow all over the cheeks and actually all in these parts of my face, but just taking it down where I might look a bit sweaty. But coming back into the eyes to help sort of finish off the whole look, and I'm going to take cork, which was this shade that I popped in the crease, on a little smudger brush, and I'm going to take it all the way underneath my eyes. And I'm going in really, really close to the lashes, but actually taking up much of my sort of, see this sort of puffier lower eyelid. I do really, really want to add shadow to, to all of that space, apart from the very, very inner corner. Now, some people really don't like the look of this. They don't like to have um, shadow underneath the eyes. And that's totally fine. You don't have to do it. Um, but I do... I do quite like to sometimes really glam it up. You know, there's a time and a place for everything and sometimes you do just want to have a lovely smoky uh, lower lash line. Because I don't have any bottom lashes, I'm going to go in with a little angled brush and just along where those lashes would be, take a very dark eyeshadow and define that lash line. It just almost gives me the the illusion of having the definition there where I actually 
you know, can't grow those lashes myself. Just off camera, I've popped a little bit of nude um, pencil in the waterline. I think when you've got darker shades on the on the eyes, it really, really helps to open them up and brighten. And that's a part of glam makeup I absolutely love. You can do that in your day to day life, literally just putting that sort of creamier shade in the waterline to get rid of any redness. Pop mascara on and you're good to go. Um, it just really brings light and life to your eyes. To finish, I'm just going to go in with the shade Yash from MAC. I mean, on my lips and I'm going in with my fingers. Again, it's a really nice way of not putting on too much lipstick. You just pat it in so it looks very, very natural. I have very naturally pigmented lips, so they are very, very bright, uh, which can be a bit tricky for sort of nuder shades. They um, don't always look as good on me. So I'm gonna go in with a little bit of pencil. Even if you are trying to go less glammy and you can wear this day to day, um, you know, sort of a natural pencil. If you just go in a lighter shade, it will just help give you a little bit more, a little bit more shape, a little bit more size out of your lips, uh, but not look sort of stuck on and like you've really, really gone in. I'm just filling out that sort of natural vermilion border, the white border around the lip. It's just extending mine to the absolute sort of edges. And it's not really overlining your lips because that sort of white border is actually part of your lip. So here we are, it's the finished look. I hope you can see that although I am wearing sort of a lot of makeup, you're not seeing any sort of heavy skin, you're not seeing super amounts of textures. Yes, the eyes are very, very bold, but the rest of the skin is kept quite natural. I've incorporated lots of what you would put into sort of a glam makeup. You've got your highlighted contour, bronze, strong eyes, strong brows, lips, um, and a sort of, you know, a really perfected skin. So hopefully you can see that it is actually achievable and to be able to sort of incorporate those elements into your makeup without things looking completely, completely over the top. I even got lashes on, but looking at myself in the mirror right here, I can see that, you know, I don't, I don't look crazy. I don't look over the top. I could go out and wear this sort of day to day, maybe for a nice evening. Although Instagram and YouTube are an amazing, amazing tool for learning how to do makeup. I think in certain circumstances, they've kind of drawn us down the garden path, um, you know, they encourage you to put on a lot of layers of very, very heavy makeup which I just don't think looks that great in real life. You can do so much with makeup with a lighter hand using less of the products um, and still achieve an incredible look. I can guarantee you if you do it in this way and you go out, people will think you look a million dollars. Thank you so much for watching. Please do like this video if you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave me a little comment. I really, really enjoyed chatting to you guys and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos from me. Until then, I'll see you again soon, guys. Bye.